See, experience, live. Loveshaped.life. Hey, I'm Nathan, and I want to welcome you back to the Love Shaped Life podcast where our dream is to see, experience, and live God's love. I'm here today with my friend, Bob, and we're in part three of our five-part Podinar called Journey to Oneness with God. We're exploring how we move from wherever we're at to experiencing God's love in a transformative way and living a love-shaped life. Mm-hmm. Bob, can you do a recap for us before I introduce today's pod in our episode? Sure. In our first podcast, we talked about the invitation, about God's mm. desire to invite every human being mm. into his presence and into a relationship with him. We looked at the storyline of the Bible, and that's really the storyline of the Bible of the heart of God wanting this relationship with his created beings and inviting us into that. That's amazing. It is amazing. We looked at how even with Adam and Eve, when sin entered the picture and it broke that relationship, Mm. but it didn't change God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God's heart and desire was still the same. Mm. So he implemented what we know as the plan of salvation, which was pointing to Jesus and how that through Jesus that relationship could be restored, Mm. right? But his desire has always been that we would live uh, in his presence. And then we looked at all the way through uh, scripture. We went from Genesis all the way through into the life of Jesus, into the New Testament, and then we came to the book of Revelation. Hmm. In the book of Revelation, when all things are made new, we saw that God made an announcement in Revelation chapter 21, when, when the heavens and the earth were made, that, that it was God's desire to again, to once again dwell physically with us. Right? That's beautiful. So, so in the beginning, God dwelled physically with Adam and Eve in a relationship. Mm. Sin broke that relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, God made provisions through Christ to bring it back mm-hmm. versus this spiritual connection with him, mm. this oneness that Jesus prayed about. And then finally, when all the earth and heaven is made new, God will once again dwell physically with us. So that was part in our one in this, or that was episode one in this part in our... Yes looking at this invitation, this journey to oneness with God was the invitation. That was number one. And then number two, we talked about seeing. Give us the recap of that. What was the big point? We looked at Jesus' life. In John chapter 5, verse 19, Jesus said he only did what he saw the Mm. Father doing, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That was the foundation of his life, how he perceived and how he saw the truth of his Father. That's how he made his his uh, decisions, his, his, you know, mm. his actions and his reactions, let's say, were based on how he saw his father. Yep. He only did what he saw the father doing. That was what he saw. It wasn't a physical seeing of his father. It was his mental understanding of his father through an understanding of scripture, yep. through an understanding of nature. Right. So that was what he that was what he did. And that was the foundation of seeing he came to reveal what the father was like. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is it. He's he's revealing in his life, his life of compassion, kindness, mercy, always self-giving love. Right. Mm -hmm. He was revealing Mm -hmm. the father. And this is what uh, he wants to open to us and to our minds. Right. Mm -hmm. We went through looking at. Uh, the Apostle Paul and his prayer to the to the Ephesians, how uh, it's his desire that we would see the, the you know the height and depth and breadth of God's love, and that by seeing it, we would be filled with all of His fullness. So when we see that seeing is this powerful principle that begins to transform. Yeah. As we perceive God's love, who God is, yes. there's something that begins to happen inside. Yeah. Of us. There's. Three main things that we see. Number one, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men Mm, unto me. mm -hmm. Jeremiah said it well in Jeremiah 31, verse 3. Uh, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, mm. with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Mm-hmm. Right? There's a drawing power yeah. in seeing the beauty of the love of God. There's just something about it. It's the power. It pulls of, us. It pulls us. It pulls us. That's and if you allow yourself to be pulled by this, the love that's sh- radiating from the heart and the character of God, then the next step is, is a transforming power. Mm. 2 Corinthians 3.18. 
But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a glass the glory of God, the glory meaning his character, the glory of the Lord, are, are transformed mm. into the same image from glory to glory. By the way, that word transformed, uh, we get our word oh, meta- yeah, metamorphosis that's, that's a from good... it. Metamorphosis. Remember yeah. when a caterpillar changes to a butterfly, gets wrapped in that cocoon, right? It's going through this Mm. process of transformation, Mm -hmm. and it comes out flying like a beautiful butterfly. So as we behold, that word behold means to gaze upon. Mm -hmm. As we gaze gaze upon the beauty of God, and we see him for who he is, there's this metamorphosis uh, going taking place in our life, right? Mm -hmm. So there's this transformation taking place in our life, so that by the grace of God, we'll come out flying like a beautiful butterfly. that's beautiful. So we go in, and we enter this process in one form, mm-hmm. could say self-interested, self-absorbed, etc. Mm-hmm. And and in this this space that seeing, meditating, accepting, resting in this space of allowing God's love to wash over us, mm-hmm. we become something new. Amen. A new shape yeah. takes on. Exactly. And that shape is defined by God's radical other-centered love. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. So seeing is the first part of that seeing process. Seeing is the first part. And then there's, okay. as we see, remember, there's that drawing power. Yeah. There's a transforming power. And then Paul in 2 Corinthians, he mentions how that it's a compelling power. The love mm. of Christ constraineth us or compels us. So it's a motivating power. This engine of... It, Ah, of loving and living well. Engine. Yeah, the engine to, to love others the way God mm. loved them. The, en- the engine to have compassion mm-hmm. and mercy mm-hmm. upon other human beings. So everything then, as we've talked about, is, is that's the home plate. Mm-hmm. This see, meditate, accept, rest is the home plate of a changed life. Exactly. This exactly. reformed life. Some old, whatever you want to call it, caterpillar... Um, pre butterfly, butterfly pre moth form mm-hmm. goes into this change metamorphosis mm-hmm. space and comes out beautiful. Is that beautiful? I used to collect butterflies, by the way, when I was a kid. Mm. My friend made me this net that was, I mean, it was mm-hmm. massive. It was like three foot from the mouth, which was like this big, of the butterfly net to the end. And we'd go find butterflies. Unfortunately, they didn't survive. We mm. would pin them to a board. But again, we were celebrating this beautiful creature that was once mm-hmm. munching on plants somewhere. Yeah. yeah, my children, when they were younger, a friend of ours gave us a, a net, not to catch them, but okay. to put the caterpillars in ah. and watch this transformation take yeah, place. Yeah. And then we would let the butterflies go free. Yeah, that's it awesome. It was amazing. It's really a miracle mm-hmm. uh, in itself watching this transformation take place right before your very eyes. That's crazy. The same thing in our own spiritual life. When we're, wow. when we're wrapped in God's love, there's mm. that transformation yep. taking place. That's really a miracle taking place in our lives. So I'm running to this text. This is the perfect place to put it. Um, <clears throat> when I was going through the book of Galatians one time, I, in my preaching days, did a series on Galatians. And I came across this incredible text, Galatians 5, and it really captures what mm-hmm. you're mentioning mm-hmm. here. Here's the text, Galatians 5, 5, for we, this is Paul, that writer that wrote to the Ephesus church. He's writing in, to a church in Asia Minor in Turkey, the Galatian church, church in Galatia. For we, through the Spirit, remember we talked about the Holy Spirit being Mm -hmm. the one who reveals, who draws us into God's company, God's fellowship. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for, and here's what we wait for, the hope of righteousness by faith. This is the whole process. Mm -hmm. This is the space. This see, meditate, accept, Mm -hmm. rest is this space of waiting in hope for God to do what we can't do. It's mm. it's Paul's description of the chrysalis or the cocoon in yes. which we oh, wait yeah. for something that we cannot stir we up or do. accomplish ourselves. Yeah. This is so, so important. I can't emphasize it enough. I don't think either of us can. Mm-hmm. That, you know, sometimes we get really anxious about wanting ourselves to be different, wanting to get from where we're at to where we want to be, right? Mm -hmm. We get anxious. 
Paul said he lived in this space, and here's what the message says. When you attempt to live by your own religious plans and projects, you are cut off from Christ. The contrast is, meanwhile, we expectantly wait for a satisfying relationship with the Spirit. So there's this expectation, this resting and expecting God to be at work in us. Mm. That's what we're Beautiful. talking about. That's what we're talking about. It, it's it's a supernatural work. Supernatural work done yep. by God Himself yep. in our lives. Yep. We're just part of the process. Remember, That's it's right. a process. We're yeah, accepting absolutely. the invitation. We're moving. We're pressing into that love-shaped life. Yep. We're pressing into the invitation of God and for what He's offering us. And That's He's right. doing the transformation. And there's right? something happening inside yeah. of us. Yeah. Because you remember that text I read, 2 Corinthians 3.18. Mm. But we all with unveiled face, beholding in, his, in a glass, the glory of the Lord are transformed, that morphosis, into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, so same idea. Same idea. Spirit of God at work. Right. And, and basically we're looking with wide-eyed wonder mm. at God's beautiful love. Beautiful. I want to yeah. put this text in here. Um, we're, I think, going to get to this, but I, it's worth highlighting. Jesus was in a conversation with the disciples around the topic of doing the works of God. Mm -hmm. And so the people, this, the crowds around him, and they asked this question, what must we do to do the works God requires? Here's Jesus' answer. The work of God is this, to believe in the one he sent. And we're going to talk today about this meditation piece, which is an act of deliberately believing the truth about God that he reveals about himself, mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. radical love. Sure. And so there is in this metamorphosis, our work in this process is to lean into mm -hmm. the truth about God's love and let it do its thing. Let it do its thing. Right. Beautiful. So meditate. That's what we're on, right? Yeah, that's what, This is yeah. number two of yeah. the four, mm -hmm. and that's meditation. And meditation is really creating this space where we let the ideas of God's love transition into an, a practical application into that space of making us new. So we're Beautiful. inhabiting this space where we're reflecting. So that's what we're going to talk about today, yeah. is this space of sure. meditating. Yeah, in, in just a couple of verses, Joshua, in the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and, and verse 8, uh, he, he says this, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to mm -hmm. do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, mm. and then you will have good success. That's good. Yeah. That's good. And we all want to prosper. We yep. all want to have good success. And prosperity in Scripture is not just uh, not necessarily talking about a monetary <laughs> right. prospering. Right? Not even, barely, we, right? Yeah, that, but it, there is a prospering in regard to this experience with God. Whole right? per and whole person whole prospering. Person, right. Yeah. And, and, and being transformed mm -hmm. and really being made whole mm -hmm. the way God intended it to be. So, so he's saying that we need to meditate. Right? Mm. He was talking about this work of meditation. And David in the book of Psalms, in, in, in Psalms chapter 1, and I'm going to read 1 and 2, but the, where it goes is verse 2. Starting off with verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, mm. and in his law he meditates day and mm. night. So again, here we have this... This encouragement to, yep. to meditate, right? Meditating yep. in the law, meditating in God's ways, right? Mm -hmm. Meditating on what we're talking about, what we're seeing mm -hmm. in God. There's this meditation taking place. And so there's another text, uh, Psalm 1914. This one um, is a prayer as well of David, let the words of my mouth and the meditation. So mm. there he's talking about meditation. This yeah. is a practice that David did. In fact, fascinating story in Genesis um, mentioning Isaac he's waiting for his for his 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 wife to be to be brought to the family estate and the bible just says kind of incidentally that he went out in the field to meditate so the ancient followers of god practiced meditation mm -hmm. meditation here by the way is this word haga and haga in the hebrew means to 
to ponder, to give serious thought to, to consider. Um, it, it even involves kind of this sense of muttering or low tones. Because remember, they were a... Um, it was it was um, an oral history, an oral society. Things ended up eventually getting put down on paper, right? But that wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, people, they were not printing books and posting stuff to Twitter and YouTube and whatever. Mm-hmm. They were verbally reflecting, kind of mm-hmm. talking to yourself, if you would, where mm-hmm. their part of their processing is this is this talking out loud as they're working through. That's this idea of meditating is, and I think of it as a stone polisher. Have you ever do that when you were a kid? You get this, it's a little mm-hmm. device, has a canister with like a um, multi-sided canister, mm-hmm. goes on a little wheel, and there's a little motor, you plug it in, and inside you put this, this graded sanding compound. Mm-hmm. And into that sanding compound, you put a rough stone. And then there, for hours, this little tumbler turns. And after a while, that stone begins to take on a more and more beautiful shape. You can change the grits to a finer grit and get a much finer polish. Mm-hmm. That's the idea. Putting God's word, the picture of God into our minds, and just tumbling it over, seeing the different sides, reflecting on what are the implications of this idea of God? Mm-hmm. What does it mean if I take that in? process it how does it how does it impact my life Mm -hmm. you know that's really that joshua and psalms when it's talking about meditation you know that word meditation Mm -hmm. is where we get this word from rumination right Mm. rumination sorry i'm not pronouncing it correctly it's rumination right so rumination as we know it is the act of when a cow chews the grass right that's good it it swallows it then it regurgitates it, it. Yeah, like I should say, it spits it back up, <laughs> right? Right, right, right. Uh, so it spits it back up, chews it again, swallows it. So it's this process. Yep. The idea here for the cow in this process is to get the maximum nutrition mm. out of the, the grass. Yep. So spiritually speaking, mm. spiritually speaking, mm. when we meditate and we're, we're processing what we see in Scripture, right? Yep. We're, we're, we're turning it over in our mind and we're allowing the Spirit of God to speak to us, yep. right? We're getting the maximum nutrition, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you see? Because cause then God is just not only expanding that word in our mind, right. but it's also being planted, mm. right? It's being planted in our mind, which is getting rid of some of our old ideas. Oh, that's right. And implanting that's right. The, the beauty of really who God is. Mm. So our erroneous ideas about God are being taken away. In fact, mm-hmm. Ephesians chapter 5, where it says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church yep. and giving himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it through oh, the washing of water by the word. So mm. there's this analogy that through the word of God, we we're being washed. In. Right. The mind Wash is being out. washed, right? Oh, that's the heart good. being washed. So our erroneous ideas about God are... Our, our, about ourselves. About what ourselves, about ourselves? ourselves yeah. uh, about other people. Uh, about our other people, that God is able to break any chains that need to be broken mm. within us, right? God is able to heal broken hearted, mm-hmm. our broken mm-hmm. hearts, our, uh, bind up our wounds. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the power in the Word of God. That is, that's, so, that's so good. I mean, we even have some more texts, I think, on that... Um, this idea of the power of the Word of God. I was just looking um, this idea in in um, in Peter, Peter, Second Peter, uh, another one of the early Christian leaders, says that God's divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and virtue, by which He has granted to us His precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, Mm -hmm. having escaped the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. Message, your tickets to participation in the life of God after you turned your back on a world corrupted by lust. So this idea... Yeah. yeah, taking in the word and experiencing its transformative, its cleansing, mm-hmm. its its forming power mm-hmm. to become something that I'm not and that I can't just sort of pull myself into. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Again, it's the power of God. The power of God. The power of God that's it's in his word. I think of that story of Jesus, you know, in John chapter 6, where he's talking and he's saying, except you eat my flesh and drink mm. my blood, you have no life in you. You mm. know, he who eats my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life. Yep. And it was this dialogue and the, deposit, the, the, the apostles were so confused. They're like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. what are you talking about? Eat your flesh, drink your blood. Right. How, how do we do that? Yep. I mean, it's just that that was what. But Jesus was had a spiritual application to he it. He did. He In did. Fact, it's right here. Yeah. yeah. It's John In 6. John chapter 6. Do you have that? I do. Uh, John 6, 61, 63. Does this offend you? This is where the disciples are like, hey, this is weird. You want us to eat your body. That's really right. weird. That's disgusting. It's, yeah. And he said, so does this offend you? And then he asked the question, what then if you should see the Son of Man, if you see me, ascend where he was before. What if I leave? Mm -hmm. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Jesus is clarifying. They they weren't getting it. Hard heads here, thick heads. They weren't getting it. Just like us. Right? So the spirit doesn't, the flesh doesn't profit you anything. The words I speak to you are spirit. They are life. Mm -hmm. Mm. On this one, the message says, every word I've spoken to you is a spirit word. And so it is life making Hmm. i love that language this jesus is saying listen you take in physical food that physical food builds your body makes you strong right Mm -hmm. i am that for your spirit Mm -hmm. for your whole person you take me in and the words you take my words in and the words i give you are life making or love shaping Mm -hmm. yeah so just like in the natural world, right, that we have a seed, right? When yep. we plant that seed, yep. if you've done gardening or if any of our audience you ever done yeah, gardening, me. yeah, you 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 plant the seed and if you plant a tomato seed, you're going to get a tomato but plant. But this right? year I planted tomato seeds and I got strawberries. I just want you to know I planted tomatoes <laughs> and I got strawberries. Okay. <laughs> We're not sure how that happened. That's what happens when you live in Maine, I guess. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so so uh, just like uh, an acorn, right? Yep. It contained within that little uh, acorn is a mighty oak. Right, right? exactly. Mighty oak. It's a miracle it's in crazy. itself. It's that, crazy. That little thing. Little, They're all over the place thing. in Maine. You're right. Little thing. Right. And then, you mighty know, oak. I just did, I wish I had it with me. Um, we have poplars. You, you, I don't know if you have cottonwood or anything like that here in, in Florida. But the the poplar... I discovered has one of the smallest seeds I've ever seen. So mm. in the when the seeds are going full blast, it's like cotton. Mm-hmm. You look up and it feels like a winter day because the cotton, these cotton puffs are filling the air. Well, you pick a cotton puff, and I'm no kidding. The seed is like a grain of salt in this cotton puff, and these these poplars that grow from this little literally grain of salt mm. sized wow. seed, these poplars are like. 30, 40, 50 Mm. feet tall coming from that little tiny seed. So we don't need like a bunch of it. We just need the actual real living words of God Mm -hmm. and their life shaping. Beautiful. And, and, and contain, like the Bible says that the seed mm-hmm. is the word of God, right? Yep. Yep. So yep. the seed is the word of God. So contained within the word of God mm. is the very life of God itself, right? Mm. So when it's being planted in our heart and the spirit of God is just germinating that seed. Yeah, and by planted, so, so by planted, just pause real quick. So by planted, you simply mean when we take it in. Correct. And start reflecting on it, start yeah. processing it. We becoming take a part it of in. It. We don't just think about it to yeah. pass the test. We're, we're we accepting it. We, okay, we're accepting we accept it. it. We're, we're taking receiving it, in. it. Okay. Right? We're receiving it. I'm taking it in. I'm yeah, saying So what yes does it mean to, to it. receive it? Does it mean I believe it? Does it mean I just think about it? What do you, what do you mean receive it? Yeah, here? that's a very good point. I'm choosing to accept. <laughs> okay. Again, seeing God, I'm seeing the beauty mm-hmm. of God. So this is what he's saying to me, that, that he's forgiven my sins if I acknowledge those sins. So uh, when I confess my sins to God, his promise is that he's forgiven me. Mm-hmm. Right? First mm-hmm. John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins mm-hmm. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm-hmm. So I'm doing, I'm accepting the word, what it mm-hmm. says. I'm acting on it. On it. I'm acknowledging before God what I've done wrong. And his promise is, is that I'm forgiven. Okay. Right? So I'm actually receiving right. Right, forgiveness okay. in, my, in my heart, in my life, to set me free hmm. from the effect of sin, which is guilt and shame. Yep. Right? So it's setting me free. So the power of it. Okay. That makes so sense. Receiving so I make, I'm receiving that, what God well, is saying. Embracing right? it yeah. as true, what God is sure. saying. Sure. Just like we talked about in our previous podcast, that 
in God's eyes, he wants to emphasize the point that we're of value in his eyes, mm. right? So I'm accepting mm -hmm. the fact that God is telling me that I'm of value in his mm -hmm. eyes, that his love for me, right, is really this unconditional love, and I'm accepting that. Mm -hmm. I'm accepting that. I'm allowing the power of the Word of God, I'm making it a part of me to say that I'm not going to listen to the voices that say I'm, no, I'm no, of no value. Right. Whoever has told me that in my life, and whatever I'm, whether I'm telling myself that, and I know the devil wants to come along, try to tell us that sometime, I'm saying no to that, yep. and I'm accepting what mm. God says. And Jesus said, you should know the truth, and the truth should set Brings you free. Freedom. So that word of God is setting me free. Mm -hmm. Setting me free from these erroneous ideas, mm -hmm. setting me free from the slavery I might have been in of thinking that I'm not of any value at all. Mm. So, I wanna, so we want to process that more, but part of that parable, the, the seed comparison, is that a seed falls in soil. Yeah, yes. Jesus talked about some different kinds of soils. Does, mm -hmm. does that help us right now at all in understanding how to maximize our experience of the transforming power of the word. Yes, I think so. And I think I need to read the parable just to Yeah, read the parable. I want yeah, to read, read the, the parable. parable. It's found in Matthew chapter 13. Okay. It's the parable of the sower. It's yep. titled the parable of the sower. So Jesus tells this parable uh, and he starts off here uh, in verse 3. Then he spoke many things to them in parables saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Hmm. Right? So here's this parable. The sower was Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. and, and later on in the same chapter, Jesus tells us what the parable meant, right? Right, yeah. And, and this is where we get the understanding of what the parable meant. Let me just read that. Yeah, we'll, go for we'll it. it. So we're not just pulling out of thin air. We're not pulling out of thin air. So here Jesus explains in verse 18 what the, what the parable meant. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower, he says. When anyone hears the word of, God, word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who was, this is he who received seed by the wayside. Okay. But he who received the seed on stony places. This is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Hmm. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Hmm. Now he receives seed among thorns as he who hears the word and, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. Hmm. But he who has received seed on the good ground is he who hears the word of God and understands it. He who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundred, some 60 and some 30. Mm. So we're looking at, I think there's four. There's four. Four, yeah. four I mean, categories. We could certainly yeah. probably expand on those, but just, just, mm -hmm. just for an example, yeah. gives them. And the first one is, is someone, as Eugene Peterson says, who doesn't take in the teaching of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It just remains on the surface. So that's when we talk about seeing, right? Yes. Seeing, but it just stops there. Yeah, you're not inviting it in. Right. You're not taking it in, right? Right. For yourself. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so the next one then, and so if you don't take it in, if you don't have this, that's why meditation is the mm -hmm. second piece. If there's no meditation, there's no context for the idea. Mm -hmm. The word is still a gr beautiful thing, right? Mm -hmm. That remains beautiful whether I believe it or not. Mm -hmm. But the meditation takes it in now. Mm -hmm. so, so that would put me at least in the second or third soil category, right? Because there's a receiving it. So the second person um, receives it with enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. They're like, yes, this is amazing. But their soil is, is shallow and when the emotions wear off. You know, you can imagine somebody who, who is, you know, they're at the car dealership and... They, the car, they see this really cool car and the, and the salesman says, hey, you want to buy the car? And they're super hyped up and they're excited. And so they sign on the dotted line. They walk out the door. Five minutes later, they're, they're 
freaked out because they didn't have any money for the car. And <laughs> and so there's like buyer's remorse. That's sort of what's happening in the second one. Just, oh yeah, let, let, let's do it, let's do it, sure. let's do it. And then it starts to sit and they're like, wait, wait, no, I've got no... And just quick switch. Yeah, and, and life happens. So the challenges of life come, right? right? And as the challenges of yep. life comes, we decide to throw it out. Right. Right? Because it, it doesn't have any roots deep yep. in the soil, so we just throw it out. So yeah. super quick, excited super response. Quick. Yeah. But then we start to see the implications. We're like, yeah, no, I yeah. can just do it something It didn't else. take root. Right. It didn't take root. So Rem- taking root means that it begins to, to reform us. To form us yes. into someone more beautiful. Yeah. And, and remember, we want to, uh, the power of the human will. Mm. There's a choice that has to be made here that God has given to all of us freedom of choice. Right. And so when we choose yep. to accept what God is saying, right, then we're receiving it to ourselves. Right. We're processing it. We're meditating upon mm-hmm. it. And then we're choosing to say, yes, Lord, mm-hmm. I'm accepting that mm-hmm. and allowing God to work in us. You yep. see what I'm so, so there's a power of choice and there's a power of the will. That's that's what I'm talking about, a power of choice, power of your will. Right, right, right. right. If you have. You yeah, know. so so a f- well back in like 2015, I realized I had this it was an epiphany, a really simple epiphany, but one day I would feel really good, be having a really good day, and then the next day I'd have a really cruddy day, just just feel down and out. Mm-hmm. And I realized like the weather's not different on the one day to the next. Like there's, and it just occurred to me that like I could actually choose to have a, another good day. I didn't have to have a crummy day. I mm-hmm. actually had the power to say today's going to be a good day. Right. And and the idea that I didn't have to simply sort of ride along with the whims of life. Mm-hmm. I could make a choice to have right. a good day today. Yeah. So it's this idea that we can we can take the text in and choose to believe it, choose to say, okay, I'm going to take that as the truth about God. I'm going to take that as a truth about me. And I'm going to hold that as a new definition about who I am, Mm -hmm. about who you are, Mm -hmm. about how the world works. And I'm going to embrace that new definition as a true declaration of reality. Mm -hmm. and And I'm going to allow that declaration to displace the other one, mm-hmm. say, the bad day, today's going to be a crummy day because I woke up feeling groggy, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just mm-hmm. going to say, okay, today's going to be a good day regardless of how I woke up. That's the choosing this new way mm-hmm. and letting it displace the mm-hmm. old one. Isn't it crazy how much that changes the day? Just realizing... I, power of choice. Yeah, I can have a new choice. day, yeah. right? Yeah. So again, the categories, right, are, are the soil represents the rocky human one. mind. Yep, yep. Home mind. Where it's like, right. I'm just, idea great. And the wind blows it away because I don't do anything about it. Correct. The second one is, yes, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can move on. Right. And then the third one. Mm. The third one is is taking it in. Yeah. Great first step. But then the kids get out of school. Mm. And man, I'm so busy. So I get wrapped up in that. And then the bills come due and I get wrapped up in that. And then my favorite show comes on. I get wrapped up in that. And then I, I got to go to a second job. And eventually life just comes in and squeezes out the life. The new life that had begun to sprout just gets choked out mm-hmm. and dies. Yeah. And let's face it. We all empathize with the pressures of life, right? Yes. We absolutely. all empathize absolutely. with the things that we have to deal with in this yep. world that is oftentimes so busy and stresses us out yep. to the max that sometimes we want to pull our hair out, so to speak, right? right. So we empathize with that, but the still, it's a choice here, it's a right? Choice. Am I going to allow the circumstances of life to overwhelm mm. me, right? And be overcome by them? Or am I going to choose to lean in to this yep. love-shaped life, right? That's right. Am I going to choose to lean into God and allow God to continue to mold and shape me? Because mm-hmm. God has promised to supply all my needs, right? Yep. God has promised to take care of me. So am I going to lean into what he's saying mm. and embrace that? Yep. Or am I going to just allow life just to, to just consume you? Squeeze it out. And, and, and let's face it, we, we, we empathize with that. Yep. And we get it. And we all go through these different periods where we allow life to overwhelm us. And God mm. brings us back to what's reality here. Hey, you forgot about me here. Right. 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 And what I'm promising you and what I'm offering you. Yeah, right? yeah, that's good. So we've got to if you're if you're overwhelmed, if you're sensing you're being overwhelmed, mm. you know, 
come back, lean into God, mm -hmm. and embrace God, mm -hmm. right? He, mm -hmm. He's always there. So that, that third category is huge. huge. I believe that's probably what happens to most of us, Yeah. right? Is allowing... Start taking it in. The cares of this life or the, or the pleasures of the world. Yeah. You know, uh, mm. things start going well, we're, we're, we're getting more money, more right. income than, than we okay. live in a materialistic world or wherever we are, and we want to buy more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. and get more. And, they, and you know, the pleasure of this world can, can overcome you as well. God wants you to have pleasures in this in this right. life. Right. I want to call them sanctified pleasures. Right. God wants Good us things. to enjoy Good the things. journey yep. of life. Yep. Yeah. There's many wonderful things to enjoy, but don't mm. allow them to take the place of to God. To choke it out. Right. Yeah. And to choke out the word of God mm -hmm. from your life. Yeah, so that's again. good. Yeah. So there's the fourth soil. Mm. And, good and, soil. and the fourth soil, the, the thing here to remember is in the fourth soil, it's, it's a heart that receives the seed. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing here is that the soil doesn't actually produce anything. It just is a safe space, a mm. safe That's place beautiful. for the seed to germinate Good and point. bring forth fruit. That's what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. This Paul thing where he said, we wait, we're resting in hope of what mm -hmm. God is doing in our lives. Mm -hmm. We are receiving the seed and recognizing that the seed is the thing. The Holy Spirit's the thing that is doing this work of transformation. Not me. I'm not. My soil, my garden soil, is the place where the seeds grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's not producing the fruit. Yeah, good point. The fruit is still the seed mm -hmm. that is still the sprout that grows from yeah. that tomato seed. Yeah. And, and the plant, the soil is the host. So, so, so we're the host. We're the host. Ah, we're the host. So how do we become a good host? Mm, that's a good question. How do we become a good that's host? That's a good question. And again, Boiling down back to God has given all of us free will. Mm -hmm. God has given all of us the power of choice. Yep. So I, I have to make a choice. Mm. How am I going to live my life? Right? That's true. And, and am I going to accept and, and, and lean in again to a love shaped life? Right. And like you had mentioned, the cycle of life, mm -hmm. live in this process of a cycle of life in a relationship with God, mm -hmm. drawing life from God, drawing my strength mm -hmm. from God. Mm -hmm. Trusting in God for the, to take care and supply all my needs. Right. Trusting in God when trouble comes my way, mm. that he's going to enable me to go through it. He'll either remove it or he'll give you the strength to go through it, whatever the case may be. It's yep. leaning into the love-shaped mm. life. It's embracing those promises, yep. right? So the divine nature becomes a part of us. Mm -hmm. And we're... we're, we're living the, the life. Yep, right? and I love yeah. that picture that the divine nature is a love shaped mm. life yes that that being like god means loving radically mm -hmm. and i just think it's important to highlight that because it's easy for us to talk about faith scripture stuff mm -hmm. and then get in our minds this big picture of religion right religion is doing 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 it's showing up in church or showing up at this event or saying the right words when actually biblically it means a life shaped in the form of God's radical other-centered love. Yeah, and remember faith or trust yep. is really the outgrowth mm. of leaning in that's to the right. love-shaped oh, life. Oh, that's right, that's Allowing right. Allowing yourself to be loved that's by right. God, and God is energizing yep. trust. He's, he's, yep. It's coming to life. So I don't have to bring anything to the table. I just have to bring a space to the table where I'm willing to receive that in. The choice. And Right, the choice to the table, and as God, as I open that space. And, and, you know, I think it's helpful to recognize that opening my heart to being willing to maybe see God in a different way, that itself is a choice. That small action, personal action to open my heart is a choice mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. itself. So we don't need to think of mm -hmm. choices as complex, big things. It's just this opening of the heart to receive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God comes in. Amen. So any of those steps we make to lean in, that's a choice. That's yeah. all we're talking about. All we're talking about. That Whatever it is you want to call it, move to lean in. That leaning in is a choice to take the next step, big or small. Mm -hmm.
And then God is doing his work. And then God is doing his work. Right? So the seed is being germinated right. in the good soil yep. because that's the choice you make. Yep. Right? So what's it's bearing great fruit. Yep. Uh, the love of God is being implanted in your life. It's transforming your life. You're yep. just on a journey. This uh, is a journey. That's this right. Is yes, that it's a process. journey. This is that process. that journey. There's no end to the journey. No, it's, that's it's right. It's a glorious journey. That's why yep. David again said in Psalm 16, uh, verse 11, mm. you know, in thy presence is fullness of joy, fullness. and at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Yep. We're yep. choosing to live our life in the presence of God. In the flow of, in the overflow of God's, mm. good. Of God's love. It's good. It's beautiful. The overflow of God's love. You know, I like what uh, uh, Paul was saying here to to Timothy. I believe it is. You know, Timothy first. Are Timothy. we in First Timothy? Yeah, was it the four one? First Timothy four fifteen. Yeah, First Timothy four fifteen. Do you have that? No, I have. It I right do. Here. Yeah, you got it. I Go for it. it. You know, Paul says that Timothy. You know, um, again, Timothy was somebody he was mentoring, right? Mm. Somebody who he was walking alongside of, mm -hmm. just like we're talking about, and helping them, uh, helping him in his Christian walk. And he's really saying the same thing to us as well. He says, meditate upon these things, give thyself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all, right? Mm. So he said, meditate upon these mm -hmm. things, you know, process them in mm -hmm. your mind and reflect upon them in your mind and give yourself wholly to them. Mm. Mm. So the promises of God. Mm -hmm. Don't allow the sense of your unworthiness mm, to hinder beautiful. you. This is a George Mueller quote. Uh, don't allow the sense of your unworthiness to hinder you from experiencing the full fulfillment of the promises of God in your life. That's beautiful. Because oftentimes, you know, we, we feel unworthy, right? Yeah. So when we feel unworthy, what do we do? We pull back. Yeah. And we, we live in the unworthy zone. Mm. But what, what we're encouraging people to do and encouraging everybody who's listening to do is don't allow this sense of your unworthiness to hinder you from, from leaning into this love-shaped life, mm. leaning into God. Don't pull back. Yeah, you see that's it, good. So move forward. Uh, whatever your, your weaknesses might be, wherever you are, lean into it, right? Meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to it. Hmm. I'm, I'm giving myself to the process yeah, yeah. of God oh, I love molding that. and shaping me. Give yourself to the process. Give yourself. The, the, um, the language that Eugene Peterson used is immerse yourself in them. Mm. Just, just let beautiful. it go. That's just beautiful. Just let it go yeah. and, and yeah. be present to the process. Yeah, a friend of mine would say, we need to be immersed in the love of God. Mm. You know, like immersion. You know, baptism is by immersion. Right. You're going underneath the water, yep, yep. completely covered by the mm. water. So you're immersing yourself, right, in the love of God. You're mm, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's the concept, right? That's, that's what it. God wants to do. That's it. It's back to the, the caterpillar being transformed into a butterfly, the uh, cocoon, the right? Context. Yeah, yeah, you're being that. wrapped mm -hmm. in the love of God. Mm, Allow yourself good. just to be wrapped by it. Mm. and allow God to do his thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's and, a beautiful and journey. And trust us because, in, and, and I'm saying that in this sense, you and I both went through experiences where we discovered the power of this principle. And we were talking the other day about this idea of never going back to hell. We both found ourselves in a hard spot. Yeah. And we said what we had before wasn't working. Mm-hmm. So you may be in a place where what you have is not working. Immerse yourself in this experience of God's love and give it a chance to do its thing. Mm -hmm. Give it a chance to do its thing. And there's know? three steps yes. to do that. And I think, we, I think it's a good time to get to those yes, three basic for, yeah. steps to meditation. The first one, Bob, is inviting the Holy Spirit. You talked about that, but just saying simply, Holy Spirit, and you may be, say something like, even like this, Holy Spirit, I have no idea who you are, but I want to experience the love-shaped life. So I'm just going to say, please do your thing in my life. Amen. Remember John uh, chapter 16, um, verse 8, I believe it is. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the Holy Spirit would guide us mm. into all truth, right? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit's a guide, remember? So mm -hmm. the part of the Godhead is guiding us in this journey, yeah, yeah. right? And so we're just going to trust the guide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that's number one. Ask God. A number two one, make a time to meditate. You know, I can say, hey, I'm going to meditate. 
but then this comes up, that comes up. So there is this need to say, okay, I'm going to set aside five minutes. I'm going to do it three times this week, just five minutes. So we're not saying, you know, take an hour or take five hours. We're just saying start deliberately making time. Yeah. Remember that I, 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 we want to talk about what meditation is and what meditation isn't, yep. right? So the biblical meditation is processing yep. the Word of God in our mind. It's going over it. It's like mm -hmm. that cow chewing on his food, right? right? So we're yep, just yep, reflecting. Yep. We can yep. call it reflecting, That's right? That's right? right. So biblical meditation isn't like trying to empty your mind right. and, and sit there for a while. So this meditation process can happen anywhere, mm, right? It can that's happen. A good point. Uh, I, I like sometimes when I'm laying in bed at night. Oh, I do it all the time. Just close my eyes and I'll, and reflect yep. upon Scripture in my mind. Reflect upon the beauty of who God is, mm. and remind myself that these are this in the story or whatever I'm seeing with God. That this is what God is offering me, mm. and I'm choosing to embrace it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so there's that. We could be uh, lunchtime, right? You could, could be, be anywhere. You, you can just take a moment to reflect on, 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 on the word, reflect on God and what he is saying. That's all we're talking about is taking time. And I think, yeah, you and know, I think it's that... forming a habit yeah, to take time. And I think that is the core piece here is deliberate, being deliberate. Being Who deliberate. cares how you do yeah. it, whether you do it when you're driving or when you're... It could be at a meal, over lunch, could no. be at night. Um, and especially when you're deliberate. in the Word, right? If yeah. you open your Bible and you're in the yeah. Word, whether yeah. it's one verse or whether it's a story in Preferably the Bible. Preferably one verse or a story. Not, right. We're not talking about reading a bunch of stuff. Right. Small pieces. Yes. Tumble them over in your mind. Correct. Look at the different sides, the different mm. angles. Right. And just reflecting on it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, processing it. And what yep. it, how am I seeing God in this passage, right? Mm. What is God speaking to me about? Mm -hmm. How am I seeing myself? You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm reflecting on it. And then I'm going to embrace it. Yeah. If and God's... that's part three, right? The mm -hmm. third step is accepting. Accepting. Yeah. And, and in that third step, we're going to talk. So, so this step and the third step, there's definitely some connection between the two. Mm, yes. This is sort of part A of mm -hmm. part B of Good these point. two. Yeah. Th this this part A piece is is the the decision, the practice of rolling scripture over rolling the truth about God over in our minds, rolling the interface between our life and and the beauty of God over in our minds. That mm -hmm. and the B part is the actual okay, let's take this truth and let's displace this lie. So, mm -hmm. so a little bit more deliberate side of this process in, in taking one fact and using that to displace another thing that is not a fact. That's good, because you remember in the parable of the sower, there's those four different categories. Right. And we want to be in the last category. Yep, yep, we want to soil. be in the good soil category. So in order to be in the good so soil category, remember we have a lot of voices, mm. uh, whether they're our own negative thinking, right? Yep. Our own negative self-talk or like we've mentioned in the past, whether it's things that have happened to us in the past, mm. whether it's a wrong picture of God that's given to us from a, a religious experience or from a home life, whatever the case may be, these are strong voices. Mm. So meditation is the process of allowing God's voice to become the stronger yeah. voice. Yeah, that's right. You see what that's I'm saying? Right. And, and, and this is not fast food. It's not right? fast food. This is not fast food. It's not. We live in such a fast-paced world, mm. and we just want everything. Mm -hmm. Well, God's trying to slow us down. Oh, that is such a good point. Take time. time. Relationships require time, mm -hmm. and and so we've got to stop what the world is pushing us to, mm -hmm. right? And slow down. I love that to maintain and have yeah, a relationship, yeah. not just with God, but with those around That's us. That's right. That's uh, right. We could spend well. a whole episode about. Slowing down. Slowing down, yeah. Yeah. There's one more here. Number three, the content of meditation. Mm -hmm. You talked about meditation that, yeah. that we're not talking about just an empty space. We're talking about yeah. uh, a refocusing of our attention. Yeah. Right. So content could be God's attributes, could be his kindness, the stories of Jesus, could be his compassion, his mercy, his forgiveness. So the first one, inviting the Holy Spirit to be our guide in this process. Number two is to make time or space, be deliberate about saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to make space for this in my life. And number three is content. And that content, which we've talked about some, that content is 
the truth about God from the story of Jesus, from the story of Scripture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and again, you mentioned meditating on the attributes of God. So important, right? As I'm journeying through Scripture and I'm seeing the life of Jesus or perhaps what uh, Paul is writing in the, in the New Testament, whatever the other authors are writing in the New Testament about uh, kindness, mm -hmm. forgiveness, mm -hmm. compassion. Yep. You, know, uh, you know, these things. Reflect on these things, mm. right? Because this is who God is. That is. That's and who he this is. is who God wants to mold and shape That's you right. to be. That's Remember, right. whatever you see in Scripture is what God is offering you. Mm. He's offering you to... to create this experience in you it's not what he's saying oh you need to measure up to this and you need to do this oh, because you good. need to that's correct good. your that's behavior good. that's not what he's saying that's often what is pushed down oh, upon us true. through a religious experience true. but what god is saying even though the standard may seem high even to to love your enemy so even that's radical forgiveness stuff. for a yeah, lot of yeah. people and for all of us you know that the challenge sometimes we have forgiveness in our heart but god is saying mm. he'll put forgiveness in our heart yeah, as yeah. god forgives us he'll put forgiveness in our heart for others he'll remove bitterness you know mm. what I'm saying? he'll remove resentment mm -hmm. so allowing god to to whatever we're reading realizing this is what god is offering me yeah yeah that's beautiful his power that's not beautiful. my power his power it's beautiful that's it's everything beautiful. it's a game changer my effort versus god's effort right my power versus god's power mm. my my power my effort fails miserably every time yeah and yep. how many times have we tried to do life in our own journey? Yep. That's not what the scripture is saying. The scripture That's is right. calling us into a relationship with God so that the life of God can flow out from him mm, into us. That is so true. And empower us to, do, to live that the life so that he designs us to live. Yep. So we got to wrap up. Yeah. And I want to remind our listeners about um, two things. Number one, that we're offering a booklet on our website, loveshaped.life. It's a short, small booklet, but it contains these principles with application pages, which we're gonna talk about. I think I said this time, we're actually gonna talk about them in our next episode where we talk about um, accepting, accepting. And then number two, we would love to journey with you. We have what we call the, the Journey to Oneness cohort, and that's gonna be open to a limited number of people. It will involve teaching, but teaching in the context of processing with us. Mm -hmm peer support, one-on-one, -on -one, where we walk with you, journey with you, journey with each other toward experiencing, toward seeing, experiencing, and living the love of God. Mm -hmm. So until next time, lean in to the love-shaped life. For more information, visit loveshaped.life.